This video is all about the tower base optimization process I took to achieve the final result used in the Division B benchmark build. If you haven't watched the earlier videos in this series, I recommend you do that first. In the first part of this video, I will describe my technique for building these bases and then I'll show the testing and analysis that finally achieved the benchmark base. Because the column and base share a lot of the same construction techniques, to keep things a little shorter, I'm going to assume you have already watched the column optimization video. If you watched my previous video on overall approach, you know exactly how I came up with this jig design. I encourage you to design and build your own, but I will include links to the STL file in the description of this video so you can print mine if you'd like. The finished jig should be 24.5 centimeters tall. This first step in the build process, once you have marked the legs for the cross member locations, is to tape them in place using a hard flat surface to make sure the legs are firmly on the ground. Just like with the column, glue the cross members in place for the first two sides like this. Take care to hold each glue joint for six to seven seconds each and use as little glue as possible so you limit the chance of accidentally gluing the base to the jig. Next, stand the jig up and sand off any excess cross member material from the first two sides. This will create a nice flat surface to work with for the remaining sides. Tip the jig back on its side and repeat the process of gluing the cross members in place. Don't forget to glue the center point of the X's to maximize the strength of this design. Once all four sides are done, stand the jig back up and sand the top surface completely flat. This is a very important step as the legs will become the joints we'll eventually glue the column to for the completed tower. At this point, you can remove the painter's tape holding the base to the jig and it should slide right off. If you have accidentally glued it to the jig, my recommendation is to turn it over and firmly press the legs from the bottom to push it off rather than to try and pull it from the top. Definitely try to use less glue and to take your time so that doesn't happen in the future. It's a good idea to test fit the custom loading block at this time. The four posts of the loading block should align with the top of the four legs. You can find the link to the STL file for this custom loading block in the description of this video. It is important to use a loading block like this to properly simulate the point loading of the base. If we just use a large flat block here, it would rest on the horizontal cross pieces and that wouldn't be an accurate representation of how the loading will happen when the column is in place. Here is the live testing of base number one. It was a very good first build and it actually held the full load at over 15 kilograms, but it failed right before I had a chance to remove the load. In general, this would be a great result at a competition as at least part of the device was built right at the limit of holding the maximum allowed load. I was trying to get a base that held 15 kilograms that I could reuse for the benchmark build, so I needed to try again. Because the base broke as I was unloading the bucket, unfortunately I am blocking most of the high speed shot. The good news is that by absolute luck, we can still see that what was most likely the first failure point in the right leg at the bottom. For the second base build, I decided to use stronger legs and quite a bit less mass for the cross members. Here is something you don't see very often, and that is a component failure during live testing that doesn't lead to immediate complete failure you can clearly see the bottom left tension piece fail. I'll circle it here. Amazingly, the base still continues to put up a good fight and holds a respectable 12.278 kilograms. Here's the high speed footage of the failure. You can see that the bottom left piece is broken from the start, just like in the live video. It is no surprise that the eventual failure is in the cross bracing close to that bottom piece. When a device splits like this, it's a good indication that your cross bracing is not strong enough. For base number three, I use slightly stronger legs and increase the cross member overall mass by about 9%. 
I didn't want to go crazy increasing the cross bracing weight, but I did make sure that the bottom piece was almost 20% stronger, so hopefully it wouldn't break early again. Here is the live testing of the base. Nothing crazy happened and it held the full load. I was able to get the bucket off this time before it decided it wanted to break. The total base mass was 4.296 grams and it held 15.162 kilograms for an efficiency of 3,529. This build was also the best efficiency of the three builds. I decided to use this base for the benchmark build. I'm sure there is plenty more optimization that could be done here, but this is a pretty good result. In the next video, I will show how I combine the benchmark column and base to create the final tower. If you watched the benchmark video, you already know it worked, but as you'll find out, I almost ruined all this work when combining them, so be sure to check that out to learn from my mistakes. Thanks for watching, and feel free to reach out to me with any specific questions.